What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to with the four game Thursday edition of Ladies, Lanes, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. It goes a long way for me on this video. It goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Kind of just getting going here in the evening. Uh, ended up smashing Jalen Suggs over two and a half threes and three and a half threes. He hit three in the first quarter. So that was very useful. Uh, Chicago way up in pace. I'm not sure what to make of it, but thought that was a pretty low number. Franz Wagner is back for that one tonight, but re-ran some stuff. That's the kind of power that you can have uh, being able to talk to the people in the morning, put a nice summary, and hey, I'm always breaking down my plays, explaining my plays and tails, even when they suck, like .4 units on the over of five and a half strikeouts for Jack Flaherty. Well, took a stab at that one, did not come to fruition in the MLB streets, but overall that Jalen Suggs one, if we can get one more three out of him the next three quarters, we're looking really good here for the evening because, uh, well, plus 250 on that one. Wish I had fired. I had a little bit more that I should have fired there, plus 500 on five threes. That would look insanely good here at the moment, but Hey, it's all great on all gravy down there at Tails. If you want to sign up, if you want to get all of my plays day of at any moment, you want to ask me any questions, you can just tag me at Eric Lindquist in that Discord. It's 50% off right now. That is going to be done on November 1st. Yes, you heard me. November 1st is the last day that you'll be able to sign up for the 50% off code, and then it goes away. $10 for your first week, $25 for your first month. If you want to dilly-dally here at the beginning of this NBA season, we're only a week in. It's going to be beautiful, my friends. You want to fire this up now. $10 first week, $25 first month. Either one would love to have you there. Goes to $20 for a week. 50 for a month from there on out. So sign up down below. All right, four games. We have two lines that are out. And here's the thing. I'm, I mean, last year, I mean, I'm always projecting out every single one, but now I have a new formula that I've got going after just one week in here. Uh, thank you, Chad GPT, for making my life super easy on the modeling on the Excel side that I wanted to do. Uh, I can now give you exact box scores that I'm going to be looking at here with 10,000 simulations, similar to what we do over on the DFS side. Found a way that I think is going to be pretty equitable going forward and makes my life so, so, so much easier. Going to make your life better too, because we'll have Earlier projections just about anywhere in the industry. I'm probably the first person to put uh, projections next to names. Obviously, the injury news, such an important part of NBA. Keep your alerts on your phone because you never know when that's going to drop stuff that will pop up. But that's enough talking here on the front end. We got four games. Producer Jacob, hi, hello. Let's get to the picks. Game number one, Milwaukee, Memphis. This is one of the games here that we do not have lines for. But I have a projected line based on the numbers and the injury news that we have here. 119, 117 bucks. Now, do with that what you will. Here's the major thing that I am looking at. One, John Morant, will he play on a back-to-back? -back? He was questionable coming into this one. Two, we have guys like Jaron Jackson Jr., Brandon Clark, that have come off of major significant injuries here in the last however long. Do they end up playing here on a back-to-back? -back? I do not know, but they're currently playing as it stands right now. Uh, I'm recording this just after 9.50, well, yeah, 9, 9 o'clock. Uh, Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific. So that will finish up. I'll be able to give a more exacting box score. And hey, something this evening could even drop where they say that they're not going to play John Morant here on the back-to-back. -back. They're hosting Milwaukee, though. So anyway, we've got a major situation going on with a number of teams here in the NBA. It's kind of a cancer that's going around. And that is crappy Benchopolis. Like, I don't even know, like, a, a correct way of putting this. This bench is the same kind of bench we've looked at for a while. And DeLon Wright defensively can be okay, but you can't have him out there offensively for that long. I have him for 12 minutes. Pat Connaughton, 17 minutes. We've seen it long enough. Now, Bobby Portis, somebody that can mix in there from time to time and look pretty darn good. Torian Prince has been good in this starting lineup. But, like, overall, they have a sixth man. They don't really have a seventh, eighth, ninth that are all that equitable. A.J. Green going to probably have to play some minutes for him. But all of that being said, you got Dame, you got Giannis. I have hope that this Bucks team will still figure things out as it goes along. Same way that I talked about Dallas last year. I know I brought that talking point up a number of times. But I really am looking at this Memphis side as one that could be resting some key major pieces. And Scottie Pippen uh, Jr. has been awesome for Memphis in limited capacities. If Jaws sits, he'll be a huge talking point. We'll actually be looking at an assist ladder for him. We'll be looking at a number of those opening numbers. And I really try to pounce on those as early as possible when circumstances change because, well, they're going to get bet into shape very, very quickly by people like me, people like DKDFS, who's also in Tails, people like Donuts over here in Tails as well. Tons of great people you can follow that are also going to put their money where their mouth is the same way that I am. But 
What I am anticipating here is something in that mid 230s for a total, something that is going to favor Milwaukee because it's Memphis on the back to back. But I'm not sure exactly how the numbers roll out. But Milwaukee money line, that will be my lean for now. And hey, why don't we throw Giannis triple double out there? Because I do think that assist rate has got to find ways to improve alongside Damian Lillard, get him involved. Find ways to break through that ceiling because right now he's averaging, what, 6.3 assists per game in the early onset of the season. Giannis, he's going to spike a massive upside distributing the ball sooner rather than later. They need Chris Middleton back bad. All righty, Houston plus four and a half taking on Dallas as it stands right now. This is going to probably be my favorite prop game to be checking out, mainly uh, there's two of them. Obviously, I think Keontae George is something uh, in the Utah spot if there's no Laurie Markin out there. You could see massive minutes for him in blowouts even. Lots of ways that those numbers actually stay intact against a team like San Antonio that will be on a back-to-back -back having to take on OKC. Oh, my God. Not, uh, not for the faint of heart here, but Houston, Dallas. The main thing I want to point out is how good Dallas is has been defensively with Derek Lively the second on the floor. It's a number and a stat that I went through a number of times last season during the postseason, but it started to carry over with P.J. Washington and, and Derek Lively the second out on the floor. We're talking 113 adjusted defensive rating. Uh, sorry, a 108 adjusted defensive rating, 111.2 overall. So nearly three points better with Derek Lively on the floor as opposed to Daniel Gafford. However, during the regular season, there are times that they need to give extra leash to Daniel Gafford. You want to keep Derek Lively kind of on bubble wrap. He'll be the guy come playoff time that plays 30 minutes, 32 minutes a night. But right now, I'm not going to call them garbage games, but you have closers. You have Luka Doncic. You have Kyrie Irving. You have Klay Thompson who can knock down an open shot or two, if you ask me. I'm just telling you, it is definitely a spot where Derek Lively will be the guy come playoff time. But against Houston, in a spot like this, I see this being more of like a Daniel Gafford true 24-24 split in these type of spots. And he's been undervalued just nonstop because Maxi Kleba still not going to be on the floor for this one. And that is a gigantic, gigantic deal. As for Houston, really no injury news that's sitting on their size outside of the eternal Steven Adams that is just staring us in the face. Played 14 minutes, three for three from the field. Welcome back, young man. They end up taking down San Antonio. It was weird seeing him stand next to Victor Wembanyama. We'll just say that, but... I think Daniel Gafford over 16 and a half PRA. This is where I put my money. I think it's where you should too. I like this for a half unit. It's minus 105 at bet 365. Damn good fine. Why don't you suck it to me one more time or sign up at the link below. Here's how. You simply bet $5, you get yourself $200 in bonus bets, and you can fire that $200 in bonus bets on any sport. Yes, we have Patrick Mahomes on the, on the, on the screen. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. But also, if you're in one of these great states, all 11 of them on your screen, Colorado, Louisiana, Virginia, Kentucky, New Jersey, Arizona, Ohio, Iowa, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina, come on and raise up. Take your shirt off, twist it around your head, spin it like a helicopter. Bet 365, friends. It is an awesome opportunity. Flashback to Mahomes one more time. I'm here. I'm here. Bet five, get 200 in bonus bets only for 21 and over, 18 and over in Kentucky. Would love to have you guys signing up the link below and getting yourself $200 bonus bets. First off, like Daniel Gafford over 16 and a half PRA or the plays that I'm about to get to. Let's get to them now here, my friend, Jake. Didn't mean to call him my friend. God damn it. How, how dare I? How dare I? My co-worker. Anyway, San Antonio taking on Utah in this one. Again, no spread out. Here is what I currently have projected, and I'm never going to put these on the screen. And I'm kind, of, I'm kind of like interested to see if you guys like when I throw these out there because sometimes there's a little check and balances system because I'm, again, simulating this out as many times as I humanly possibly can. And there's a massive piece of injury news in Lori Markinen, who is questionable for this one. I'm going to just throw it out there and say it kind of matters when you are by far the best player on your team. And there's really no question. He's the only guy sitting there. Now, Taylor Hendricks, he is out. That is a bummer. What you saw for that leg injury is still so horrendous. But Devin Vassell, Trey Jones still out here on the San Antonio side. You're still seeing Chris Paul, Jeremy Sohan, Harrison Barnes. Kelton Johnson mixing in quite a bit here, but Julian Champagny and, of course, Victor Wembanyama, who for the first time I project for four blocks. Yeah, it's the first time I've projected him for that number in a game so far. Might have to look. We'll see how, how things kind of... I, I don't even know if he ends up playing on the back-to-back, -back, and that's where I'm really nervous about how this number ends up rolling out, and that's kind of why I don't even want to say these things out loud. But I repeat, 
I've got the Spurs two point favorites in this one, 114, 112. Again, that is just rounding to the nearest point. I do have decimal points attached to it, but when you're talking minus 110, both sides of things, I'm going to round for you at certain points. And then other times I'll just be like, yeah, that half point is kind of useful because, well, it's always useful. Anyway, what I'm getting at is Victor Wembanyama. I'm not going to project him for over 32 minutes at the moment. Jeremy Sohan, 30 minutes. Taking it down a little bit here on the back to back. And Victor Wembanyama, does he play here on the back to back? I don't know. And if Laurie Markkinen plays, is he going to be full force? No. I took his minutes down to 28 simply to trim what some of this spread is going to look like. Because if I go to like 35, 34 for Laurie Markkinen, the Jazz look even better. And it's going to be like a pick em type situation. As for San Antonio, if Wembenyama's out, just, my God, try to get in on the Utah side. I don't even care that it'll be, you know. It's just such a huge lingering Q tag on the Laurie Markkinen side. And then Victor Wembenyama on a back-to-back. That's going to be something we pay attention to soon. But I want to throw this one out there. San Antonio Moneyline, if you have Wemby in, and John Collins, Utah, a guy that I think has a chance to slide in with Hendricks out. You could see Bryce Sensabaugh. I think it makes sense for Sensabaugh to start. <laughs> but also, uh, it could very well be John Collins sharing the floor. Yeah, you heard me. Sharing the floor at the four next to Walker Kessler instead of backing him up. There are options for him. And if John Collins ends up on the floor without Lori Markinen, that usage for him and Keontae George, that's the main guy to be paying attention to from a points prop perspective. Have him in for rate at uh, 17 and a half at the moment. That would look really, really good. And that is with trimmed down Laurie Mark in a minute. If Laurie's out 20 plus, I'd be looking at firing it. And our last game of the night and my favorite play of what we have established here, Daniel Gafford, I, I like, it's my favorite prop of the day thus far. Lots of props to still be dropping with eight teams and play four games, but this is a spread. I like it. We're looking at Phoenix, five and a half point favorites going up against the Clippers. There was a very tightly contested spot for Phoenix in this very same arena. And uh, I don't even know what it's called here, but uh, the, the new Steve Ballmer playground, basically, if you want to call it such. Uh, Avika Zubats, it's going to be a back to back for the Clippers, which is why we've seen this number come up a little bit, considering, you know, they're about to play here on Wednesday night. They're tipping off in just under an hour but uh looking at the clipper side of things i'm assuming james harden avika zubats all of these main guys in Kawhi leonard obviously still out for this team but they're deep enough as far as like from a bench perspective they go down to the likes of nicholas batum chris dunn amir coffee kevin porter jr off the bench that i think they'll be okay on the back-to-back -back regardless of how things pan out i don't see anybody i, I didn't ramp up anybody's minutes like crazy and yet I like taking the points here going up against Phoenix. Bradley Beal hasn't exactly looked right. They did have a tough little schedule stretch. Uh, Yusuf Nurkic can't even get out on the floor. They are playing Royce O'Neal more. It's almost like they heard me. Also, common sense would just tell you that you need to play like high 20s minutes for Royce O'Neal. You have too many preeminent wings, but Clippers, kind of devoid of wings with no Paul George and Kawhi Leonard out because, you know, Paul George is in Philly and Kawhi Leonard is eternally hurt. However, plus five and a half, I repeat, I've got this one just inside of four points. And that is going to be, when you're talking about a tightly contested game like this, you get to some of these close close situations. I really like grabbing the points on the Clipper side of it, especially early in the season. Give me this for a half unit. Let's get the heck out of it. And that does it for a quick, easy edition of Lindy's Leans, Lights, and Locks in the NBA Streets. Head to the comment section. Let me know your favorite plays that exist on the board here for Thursday. we got another massive slate coming your way on Friday. I'm always posting in Tales, Lindy 5-0. I repeat, November 1st. This deal is going away November 1st. That will be your last time to sign up. So this is Halloween. This is Halloween. 50% off. Can't keep doing it. Doesn't really. Thanks, Mr. Jacob. Really nice cut. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Thursday.